Hey everybody, welcome back. In today's episode of Raising Unicorns, we'll be discussing how our team has been relying on ChatGPT to come up with hook ideas that are so good, they make Don Draper look like a preschooler with a crayon. You don't have to be a unicorn to capture the magic of a great business. Harlan Brothers has helped countless companies, both big and small, grow into the businesses they were meant to be. Here on Raising Unicorns, we share the marketing secrets we've learned to help you raise your business by hundreds of thousands to hundreds of millions of dollars and beyond. Welcome back. Today with me, I have the one, the only Jake freaking Christensen. What's up? Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about something that everybody is talking about lately because it's one part exciting and like, whoa, holy crap, this is amazing. And another part terrifying and genuinely kind of scary. It's artificial intelligence. Yay. Yay. We love artificial intelligence in case it ever turns against us. Please. We will be good hostages. I want it on record that I love artificial intelligence. <laughs> Skynet. <laughs> we at Harlem Brothers, we always try and be on the cutting edge of whatever's going on in the marketing world and like try and be leading at the forefront of whatever trends or whatever platforms or whatever technology is available to us. For example, like we've been shooting our ads on red cameras for a long time and doing 6 and 8K capturing on the red camera so we can master for all different sorts of formats, vertical formats, you know, 16 by 9 to 9 by 16. And then just trying to like be on the bleeding edge of whatever we can to make our creative go further and then do more for our clients. We have a whole Slack channel at Harm Brothers that is now dedicated to this AI and machine learning because some people get mad when you call AI machine learning. Tyler Stevens. <laughs> But we just have a whole Slack thread where we've been experimenting and seeing how we can utilize this in our workflows at Harmon Brothers to automate certain parts of the process, whether it be writing copy or actually generating ideas and how we can use that to like jumpstart and kickstart our concepts to better our workflow for our clients and give them more bang for a buck. And I mean, what's chat GPT been out for three months? Yeah. It was like yeah, December. Something like that. Since then, we've already found a huge multitude of applications within Harmon Brothers and our creative team and marketing team of how we've been able to utilize it. And we're going to talk about a few of those today. Yeah. Yeah. Let's start off with using AI for hook ideas. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what AI tools are used primarily, Jake. I've used ChatGPT primarily. Yeah. It's been the main one. It's been pretty freaking awesome at just telling it about a product, describing like what are the key benefits of the product, and then asking it what are some hook ideas or what are some ad concepts for this product. And all like it, it's given so many awesome ideas. And another thing that I've done is if I've come up with an idea, I'll ask ChatGPT, do you think this is a good idea for marketing this product? <laughs> And it gives me such a solid evaluation on the thing. You want me to give an example? Yeah, you showed me one and it actually like genuinely blew me away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well said. Wait, which one did I show you? I believe it was the Tarzan okay. example. Yeah. 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 I was coming up with concepts for a barefoot shoe company that has barefoot shoes, you know, shoes that make it feel like you're barefoot when you're wearing them. They're flat, so there's no arch support or anything like that because it is actually not good for your feet to have shoes with arch support for most people. Anyway, so it's a side note. So I asked it, would Tarzan be a good spokesperson for this ad? I asked ChatGPT and it responded and said, Tarzan would be a good option for this product because he is one who is always barefoot and always running around barefoot. And anytime he's wearing shoes, it hinders him. So having a barefoot shoe campaign would be good for using Tarzan. However, Tarzan might not be the best spokesperson for this because Tarzan is not known for being a distance runner or or being a runner in general. Tarzan is mostly known for swinging through trees and everything like that and being in the forest and being in trees, whereas barefoot shoes are targeted primarily towards people who are runners. That's <laughs> what I'm talking about. It blew my mind. Yeah. I was like, what? I mean, it was just spot on. It gave me like positives for using Tarzan. It gave me negatives for using Tarzan. And they were both so accurate and such good points and things that I would have most likely eventually figured out in the writing process of being like, oh, here are some downsides to it. Or how do I write around this? Or how do I write around this? Yeah, exactly. But it would have taken me some writing of the scripts for a while before I saw those roadblocks and before I saw some of those benefits and saw some of those negatives and then would have had to try and figure out how to write around them. But instead, ChatGPT let me know right away. Here's what's good about it. Here's what's bad about it. Now you decide. 
And it was awesome. Okay, so while you were saying that, Jake, I just asked, one of our clients is called Heirloom Paint Company. Their main differentiator is you only have to apply one coat of paint to a DIY project, so you don't have to go it over like five or six times. Yeah. And so I said, write me a hooky ad idea for this paint product. You only have to paint something once. It says, paint once and done with our revolutionary one coat formula, featuring a time-lapse video of a big room being painted quickly and effortlessly with just one coat of paint. The ad idea highlights the ease and convenience of using the DIY paint company. The hooky tagline, paint once and done, emphasizes that you won't have to waste time and money applying multiple coats of paint to achieve the desired look. This ad can be used across various media, such as social media, uh, television, and online advertising targeting homeowners and DIY enthusiasts. (laughs) Wow. It's really interesting for gut checking yourself because I mean, there's been other times we've written ads where we've gotten into production and we haven't seen the problems until it like, gets in a post. Mm-hmm. Being able to short circuit that and actually get those pain points or those problems out of the way. Mm-hmm. Or like you said, being aware of it way earlier lets you maybe reposition how you write the script, how you talk about like Tarzan. You could justify him being a distance runner. Maybe he swung on the vines all the time because he couldn't run with just bare feet because like too many things would poke his feet. But now he has the protection he needs to run barefoot. but He has a protection for his feet, but he still has the barefoot sensation because he still hates shoes. Uh-huh. Well, look, there you go. Nailed it. Skinners, Nailed you it. listening? <laughs> it's a good gut check. Obviously, it misses still. Mm-hmm. Like, it misses a lot, right? Yep. But it's interesting how insightful it is more often than not, I would say. What AI things have you been using a lot? So I've been working a lot with product imagery because we're working at Harm Brothers to do more of a systematic approach to product photography and tagline testing. And so I've been using it to come up with taglines for products. Jake and I have been working on this. This is something for the last, like, I don't know, three or four months of trying to get catchy taglines for products. And our guideline is like three to seven words is like the max. Mm-hmm. It's so hard to do. Yeah. When we're used to writing copy, copy on a website or for the thumbnail for our videos, we usually have the title and body copy on Facebook's ad placements. You can write 400 characters, 30 words on there. That's so easy to distill a product down to like three to seven words is such a pain in the butt. Uh that old saying of like, I didn't have time to write you a short letter, so I wrote you a long one. Mm -hmm. And it's very much so because it's very time-consuming and challenging to distill an idea down to very simple phrases. So I've been doing a lot of writing taglines for brands and like writing taglines for products and trying to simplify or give me a bunch of variations on this tagline Mm -hmm. that are three to seven words or like writing a long one and say, distill this tag that I wrote down to no more than seven words. And it's shocking how well it does There's obviously constraints. You can't say everything in that many words, period. But it's crazy. I would say it gets you there probably 60, 70% of the time where some of the stuff that comes out of it is super good. Uh Shockingly clever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if you're constantly like writing these different lines and you're noticing, I keep saying this word in every single one of these lines, you can ask it, hey, give me taglines about this thing without using this word. Yeah. You know, and then you get a bunch of variations without using that word. And then you can say, make it funny. And then it'll give you variations that aren't very funny, but it will try. Maybe spark ideas. (laughs) Maybe spark ideas for humor. And Jake, there's another thing that will actually do that for you without machine learning. It's called a thesaurus. Whoa, (laughs) dude. (laughs) Where it will give you synonyms. (laughs) Right, yeah. (laughs) But that's hard. That's hard, Then I gotta push command T and type thesaurus. (laughs) (laughs) It is shocking to me how challenging that can be from a copywriting standpoint and how helpful it's been. Even like taglines on the end of videos, wrapping something up of kind of button on the ad. Yeah. That's something that you and I were messing around with on a couple of pitches. Uh-huh. Uh, the other one that's really fascinating to me is one that we subscribe to. It's Flare.io. And it's a product-specific machine learning image generator. It's still got a ways to go, in my opinion. But like I've been able to generate plenty of imagery that, especially if it's a scrappy company, mm-hmm. is easily good enough to throw on a Facebook ad, for sure. If you guys have tried Midjourney, we've messed around with Midjourney a decent amount. Yeah, They have some really cool, hyper-realistic and very stylized imagery that comes out of it. It's really, really cool. But it can't really incorporate like a product. And so this one incorporates a product, but you'll have those random things just like on Mid Journey if you ever use those where like the eyes will look like super funky mm-hmm. or the hands still look like they stuck a hand in a blender and then pulled it out. <laughs> yeah. and Her foot's facing the wrong way. Yeah, foot's facing the wrong way or the elbow's backwards. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy because I, I think give it like one or two more iterations. This is a bold 
bold statement, but I don't think studio product photography, if you have a good enough render of your product itself, will be a thing of the past. I was messing around with Mid Journey and trying to create some imagery for Stormlight Archive, which is one of Brandon Sanderson's like series. And it's very high concept. It's pretty wild. A lot of people think it would be unfilmable because it's such a crazy world and has like lots of crazy concepts. And I was able to generate some amazingly good looking stuff. And the thing that really blew my mind about how good it's getting now, especially on image generation, the picture screwed up, but it had energy coming off the sword, right? Mm -hmm. And it was crazy because the energy of the sword and the light from the sword actually was on his clothing. Mm -hmm. And it was like lit properly, like you would in real life, or like if you were an artist doing it, you would light from a source, you know, even though he was backlit by a sunset, the blue light from the blade was illuminating his clothes, which was like so wild to me. And so I think that the thing that's missing in product photography, specifically for marketers who are listening, is that you can't get interactive lighting and shading on your object just quite yet. You're actually able to upload your product PNG like file, you know, like a transparent background file of your product, but you can't get interactive lighting just yet. My suspicion is if you could upload like a 3D file, something out of Blender or an OBJ file, I think that the machine learning will be able to do that in no time because yeah. it has a 3D object. It can put artificial lighting in there. It's wild to me to think, this is my bold prediction. I'm coming back a few steps here, like 10. I would not be shocked if in... Actually, I'll put my skin in the game here. Ooh. I bet within one year, 90% of product photography, actual tabletop photography specifically, will be completely eliminated. Oh, wow. You say you're putting skin in the game. So how much are you betting? Okay, so... <laughs> Keith, are you witnessing? <laughs> You're witnessing? Okay, Jake, I bet you 100... Well, I don't know how we're going to measure this. The 90% thing. Yeah, that's real hard. Okay, to... let's just say the AI will get so good, it could eliminate 90% if everybody chose to use it. Uh-huh. Yeah. $100. I'll put 100 bucks on the line. Uh, I don't want to bet against you. I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> One dollar. One dollar. Let's go. Here, here's the handshake. We got it. We shook hands. And the other thing is too, it's crazy is the realism too. With some of the environments that they're able to generate on the product AI image stuff on Flare, some of it looks crazy. Some of it's like, whoa, this looks like a bad acid trip. Yeah. But then some of it's like, oh my gosh, that looks so unbelievably real. Or like that looks like a composite someone did in Photoshop. Those are the two big ones that I've been using a lot. I think it's me, Jake, and Brett Crockett. He's our CMO here at Harm Brothers. And Tom. Tom's one of our lead ad buyers. He's been yeah. using a ton. And so like we've kind of really gotten into it. You've been using it a little bit for concepting as well. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? The other day, I got pulled to a meeting very last minute. They were like, hey, we have this client coming in. Would you want to just pop in? And any like creative ideas that you have, feel free to throw them out. Otherwise, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> I went in this meeting and the client was talking about, you know, what they liked about the videos that we had already done for them. And they kind of talked about what they were looking for in the future. And they were describing like, we want brand character and we want someone that's like memorable that we can use it across multiple videos and across multiple images and through different campaigns, like a character that stays with them. And they also said that they wanted someone who sounds like their name or that has like a rhyme with their name, but it's a under your desk treadmill is what they have. So I put into chat GPT, this is like describing the product, describing what they were looking for, something that sounds like this. And I got quite a few things. A lot of it was stuff that I wasn't quite okay with. And then one of the things, surprisingly, was Tarzan. And again, I mean, I had been working on that other Tarzan project like a month and a half earlier, but it came up again and I realized Tarzan, lifespan. It rhymes. Be like Tarzan, get a lifespan. Be like Tarzan, get a lifespan. Exactly. And seeing as how Tarzan... Nailed it. Would Actually, ChatGPT just said that. Oh, really? No, no, I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what I wrote down after ChatGPT said Tarzan. I was like, oh, be like Tarzan, get it. But you said that? Yeah, yeah. That, brilliant. that was in the we, we, we were brilliant. We just, I mean, it's actually pretty obvious. But. Yeah, yeah, it's very obvious. With Tarzan, as the spokesperson, it's like Tarzan is used to moving around and being constantly moving throughout the day. And then if you put Tarzan at a desk, one, that's a very iconic thing to see. You know, a guy in a loincloth working at a desk. That opening image is already just amazing. And then having this guy who's used to swinging trees, something like I was writing down just little parts of the script and little jokes like that. And like one of the jokes I put was having Tarzan say, I used to be a swinger, not that kind. 
I need you to laugh at that joke for me, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're searching. I know. I'm <laughs> trying to be right now. I but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was like writing down different lines of the script. And then in the meeting, I was able to be like, hey, can I throw out an idea? And they were like, sure. And so I got to throw out this idea of Tarzan. It met all the specifications of what they were looking for, uh, of what they had described throughout the meeting. And they were blown away. I mean, I didn't mention that I used ChatGPT. I just said, hey, here's what I just came up with. And and I read them like a couple lines from the script and they were so stoked about it. Actually, I'm going to pull up a couple lines from the script. I used to run, climb, and swing all day. But since I got an office job, I'm not moving nearly as much as I want to. That's why I got a lifespan. I can keep moving while I'm at my desk. Our bodies weren't made to sit around all day. We're not trees. We're animals. We're made to move. I used to be a swinger. Not that kind. <laughs> In context, it's way better. And now I get to move while I'm at my desk. Get a lifespan like Tarzan. So I read that to the client. They were so blown away by it. The team who was there all liked it. The client liked it. And then later that day, I told Shane about this. And Shane pulled up. What did you use? Mid Journey. Mid Journey. And he put in the description that I told him about this ad and instantly came up with these awesome images of Tarzan working at a desk, standing on a treadmill. And I was so ticked that I hadn't already been playing with Mid Journey because if I had been in that meeting, I could have told the client, read them this script, and then showed them images of what it would look like that were made on Mid Journey. And I think it would just blow away clients to be able to have that instantly on the spot and show them exactly what it looks like. So I'm stoked to get pulled into another random meeting so I can do that. Or like when you have time to prepare for an actual pitch. Yeah, or maybe actually prepare. Well, I mean, essentially, it's concept art. Obviously, with storyboards, this doesn't work as well because it's really hard to generate the same type of style from board to board and have the same character, mm -hmm. right? Actually, that gives me an idea. If you had like an illustrator go and actually make your characters, draw up your characters and like have them... Because you can actually upload, make this person do this, and you can upload a base image. Oh, gotcha. Well, I think you could have it create a base image and then use that across that's them, true couldn't you yeah for concept art already right now just like being able to get across what you're thinking visually mm -hmm. is so helpful for a client I mean it also might set your bar really high because the art for this running on Tarzan thing <laughs> looks freaking amazing and there's no way we'd be able to film like that it's an office it's half jungle it's like out of a Tim Burton movie you're like yeah we can do this <laughs> no, we can't. But it gets the idea, especially with like Tarzan on the treadmill and like the visual impact of it. Really interesting. Like, oh man, that's like so different from what we see in like anything in the exercise space, right? Uh -huh. I think it's a really powerful tool. It's like 60 bucks a month if you're a company that does over a million dollars, I think is what it is. It's such an affordable thing. We've only done a handful of ads that have concept art behind them. I know we did one that was like, it was so expensive. It was several thousand dollars just for the concept art. And same thing with storyboards. If you can find a way to like actually make storyboards from characters you've already made or have the AI actually make the storyboards. Storyboards are very expensive. And uh -huh. animatics are even more expensive because you're putting them together, you're animating it, you're voicing it, you know, doing sound design. How long before AI can make animatics for you? <sighs> That one seems more complex. There's a lot more facets to it. Yeah. Two years. Okay. I believe in two years you could do it. Yeah. Especially if there was enough training around animatics in general. Right. Okay. This is a sidebar here from like the story writer side of us. So if you go read Creativity Inc., there's so many things. They never felt the pain strong enough until they got to the animatic stage when they gone through all these stages of writing where they had to pull the plug and it literally almost doubled the cost of production mm -hmm. to redo the whole thing from scratch. Can you imagine how good you could get at story writing if you could storyboard the whole thing? and see how much of a pile of crap it is before you go make a movie. If people utilize the tool correctly, your quality of movies and TV shows could be so much higher if you could see it actually play out and if it was all based off of artificial intelligence and there wasn't this huge labor cost and huge prototyping cost associated. All you basically had to do was write it. Right, yeah. Because, I mean, getting the storyboarding down and figured out, we don't have time to do that and don't have like the budget to do that so much of the time. But if you can really nail that step. Ryan just did a ad for a company and he had to do a storyboard beforehand and yeah, the animatic. The animatic and I feel like the video turned out so much better. It was so much tighter and everything like that mm -hmm. because he did that. And also when George Miller made Mad Max, he had drawn every single frame that was going to be in it. It was basically a 2000 page graphic novel. Yeah. Yeah. Then took that to set and was able to create the masterpiece that is Mad Max Fury Road.
This is like a concept I was talking about with Bryson. He's one of our VFX artists, right? The idea that creativity right now is very much so constrained by the speed in which you have to do the actual like manual inputs to uh-huh. make it happen. For instance, like he does a lot of 3D work. He's been experimenting with like Oculus, right? Where it's got this virtual reality thing where he has his hands in here and he's actually able to shape things with his hands in the 3D space. And then I was like, how much faster could you do stuff if you could do it instead of having to physically do it, you could control it with your mind. Mm-hmm. Basically, your mind could say that arch needs to be wider. It needs to be smoother. It needs to be, you know, whatever. He's like, I could work hundreds of times faster than I can with a mouse or clicking with, you know, these little 3D Oculus controllers. This is with like creativity and writing is you can iterate so much faster and test and get feedback so much quicker and get down that creative path and see those problems so much earlier and iterate. You still have to do the hard work of the actual, when you find a problem or you come across a problem, you have to fix it or you have to come up with a solution that makes it so it's no longer a problem. A lot of that journey itself is half the pain. A lot of that process of just the monotony of doing the actual physical labor of writing something or a physical labor of putting in a new animatic, working with a storyboard artist, all this stuff, it's not necessarily the fun part of creation. Solving the problems to me and scratching the itch is one of the best parts of creativity to me is, oh man, this didn't work and now it works and it's so wildly satisfying. It's like why I like edit sessions with editors. When something's not clicking and something's not jiving, when you get that to fix and flow and like everything, like timing of a joke all of a sudden goes from being kind of awkward and like not really working on phone flat all of a sudden it's punching and everybody in the office is laughing at the joke. Uh It's so unbelievably satisfying. And I kind of feel like this helps accelerate that process if utilized, right? Can actually get to that point sooner. And if if you're utilizing the tool and putting in the work. Yeah. I asked ChatGPT how long before AI can make animated videos. And it said, AI is already being used to create animated videos and the technology is rapidly improving. There are several AI power tools available today that can be used to create animated videos, including Plotagon, Vi... V Y O N D Vind Vind maybe and Animaker Crockett actually had another one that he had been experimenting with. It's basically like really simple. I don't know if it's necessarily AI, but you can tell it what you want. It basically templates everything together for you and animates it really simply. Most graphics are already animated by the AI. It's crazy how much video is already being done pretty quickly. And like you've seen all those ads on YouTube where it's just like press releases that they then put an automated voice on and then they go out and like scrub a bunch of stuff from the internet. There's like news articles around Gwyneth Paltrow's ski trial. Right. Then it's a machine voice who's reading it. It's like Gwyneth Paltrow was in Utah this week for a trial of the accused optometrist who had hit her in a skiing accident. So the whole thing is generated already and they have all these pictures from the AP like news releases of the trial itself and Gwyneth Paltrow and this optometrist, all these things dynamically being created. I'm like, this is wild. It's funny because usually like in the past, it's always been, this is garbage. Uh-huh. It's just trash. But now it's like, this actually has useful information. <laughs> this thing this is freaking me out. Yeah. Look out, news anchors. They're yeah. coming for you too. <laughs> for real. But it's crazy. It's, it's moving them so unbelievably fast. Yeah. So whose jobs do you think are in danger? <laughs> I mean, all of ours in some way. <laughs> the way I think about it is live action directing and humans, the actual humans on set and like comedy uh-huh. is so hard for us even as humans to get right. Uh, who knows? The speed at which it's developing, it could be like five years and they're actually making full comedies in CG with CG people and like all AI. It's the crazy levels of computing power. Right? Who knows? For the time being, I feel like that's even the comedy stuff we've... Because we've asked a lot of things to chat GPT to try and get at some jokes. Uh-huh. I think I've seen like two jokes that are actually something we would ever even consider putting in our scripts. Right. The actual comedy, uh-huh. I think it's a ways off. Yeah. The data cloud that is becoming like almost capturing... The the consciousness of comedy uh-huh. is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's freaking wild. Yeah. So who knows? But I think that part, the comedy and the onset direction part and live action people, mm-hmm. there's so many nuances to like human performances. Can you articulate why a certain comedian makes you laugh? <sighs> Sometimes you can, yeah. but other times you're like, dude, I don't even know. Uh-huh. I don't even know why this person, the way they said this line and the way they set it up is freaking killing me. Uh-huh. Nate Bargatze. Yeah. Sounds like he's just saying normal stuff. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but but for, what, 
whatever reason. So funny. On a subconscious level, you're like, this guy is so freaking hilarious. Uh-huh. And I think that we don't even know how to articulate that or identify that. I think based on what the comedy results I've seen out of Bing and ChatGPT mm-hmm. and other like dialogue-based ones, I feel like almost always when it is a good joke, it's usually a slight variant of a joke that's already been told. If it's if that makes sense, it's just cutting and pasting elements of the joke to make the mechanics of the joke work. But as far as like an original joke, uh-huh. I've never seen a AI chatbot actually produce an original joke that feels like wholly original and like very, very funny. I asked ChatGPT, what are some jobs that are at risk of being replaced because of AI? <laughs> Do you have to scroll like 900 times? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't say our jobs as manufacturing jobs, transportation jobs, customer service jobs, data entry and analysis jobs, retail and service. So I guess we'd be in the retail and service or just the service, but... Yeah, we're not retail really, we're, but services, yeah. Yeah. Services is like everything that's not a product. I'm asking ChatGPT to write me an original joke. Yeah, okay, I want to test this. Why do scientists trust atoms? Why? Because they make up everything. (laughs) Wouldn't that be why don't they? Oh, is that what I said? Why don't scientists oh. trust Adam? <laughs> I was like, see, Crap. ChatGPT sucks at writing jokes. <laughs> Why don't Jake scientists just, trust Jake just doesn't know how to read. <laughs> I just don't know how to read. <laughs> Dang it. I guarantee this has been said somewhere else. That feels like a dad joke, like a dad pun. Right, right? yeah. Why don't scientists trust Adams. Uh-huh. It's a known joke. Yeah. It's actually a title of a book on Amazon. Did you say, tell me an original joke? Yep. So, I said, write me an original joke. It doesn't exist anywhere on the internet. Can you say that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, did you get that joke from somewhere? <laughs> yeah. Accuse it. That feels like plagiarism. <laughs> say that. <laughs> As an AI language model, I don't browse the internet or have access to it. All the responses I generate are based on my training data and knowledge, which includes a wide range of jokes and humor. However, it's possible that similar jokes exist online or have been told by others in the past. Regardless, I apologize if the joke I provided felt unoriginal or plagiarized in any way. I can certainly come up with a different joke. Yeah, tell it to you. Because he freaking plagiarized that crap. You go to jail (laughs) for that. You're like, oh, I'm just off of my training data set. I'm saying, come up with another joke that's totally original. Why did the math book look so sad? Because it had too many problems. Again, I think that's yeah, a straight up like, like... These are dad jokes. Yeah, these, yeah, these are... And the, it, again, the mechanics of these jokes are set up in a way it's like, ask a, a question that seems arbitrary uh-huh. and then the answer so, has some sort of secondary meaning within it, right? Uh-huh. It's always some pun meaning, uh-huh. right? Where it has problems, not math problems, but problems that would make a book sad. And like, let's be honest, those jokes suck. <laughs> They're not very hard to come up with. My mother-in-law gave me a book of dad jokes when I had my fourth kid. There's thousands of them and there's a reason why there's thousands of them. Dad, I'm hungry. Well, hi, hungry, I'm dad. <laughs> you know, like that crap. Yeah, the mechanics are easy, I think, to train an AI on. I think the subtlety of humor and callbacks and tone are very hard to quantify. And especially because really good humor is very surprising and evolves constantly. Stand-up comedy from like the 70s and 80s is not nearly as funny as what we have now because I feel like comedy is always evolving to surprise us and it's always pushing the edge of expectation because that's how comedy works is it defies expectation in a delightful way that really like catches you off guard, right? You can train it in the machine learning can understand like context on a long-term basis. But if it's always constantly evolving and changing, our expectations are catching up because we consume so much content. Mm -hmm. We consume so much comedy, specifically between television shows and comedy routines, Instagram reels and all that stuff. Our expectations are constantly changing. I think it's going to be really hard for an AI to keep up at that speed of change. Right, yeah. Maybe this is just us like trying to convince ourselves we'll have a job. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's such an interesting thing that we can't pinpoint down. And if we can't pinpoint down, then how are we going to program something else to pinpoint it down? Well, that, that's the thing that's so bizarre about machine learning, though. It works in a way where... It, I mean, they call it machine learning, right? Because it's actually learning something and it can't necessarily tell you why the joke's funny. Actually, I want you to explain to me the mechanics of why that joke is funny and see if it actually can answer that question. The last thing I said to it was, write a joke about Shane. And it said, why did Shane bring a ladder to the party? Because he heard the drinks were on the house. <laughs> 
<laughs> and the reason that joke is funny is yeah. because Shane's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why is that joke funny? Explain it to me like a robot. The joke is a play on words using the phrase on the house to create a pun. The phrase on the house typically means that something is being offered for free, often hospitality, whatever. Yeah, so I guess... Ask Chat GPT if it can tell an original non-pun-based joke. I said... Can you tell an original non-pun based joke? And it said, why did the tomato turn red? Because it saw the salad dressing. That's a pun based joke, chat GPT. See, this is why I'm not that concerned. <laughs> uh-huh. Zach, we talked a lot with Zach on the podcast about comedy. Again, I think it is a super complex, ever-evolving component of human consciousness, especially like the zeitgeist of society. So I responded and said, that's a pun based joke. And chat GPT said, you're right. I apologize for the mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another original non-pun based joke for you. Why did the chicken cross the playground? To get to the other slide. That's another pun based joke, ChatGPT. <laughs> It can't stop. It can't stop. So what we're saying, again, is that it can only do puns currently. Uh Uh-huh. And they're not even great ones. Yeah. And they're arguably ones that are already written in the internet somewhere that it swears it didn't plagiarize from them. Uh Uh-huh. Where are they getting the data set then from? I don't know. Because like if it's saying I don't scan the internet, is it just like, oh, someone else is scanning the internet and just putting in a giant Google spreadsheet and just pumping it full of it? Right. Yeah. That is interesting that it said that. I have no idea how machine learning works and how you put it like stuff into it. I said, that's another pun-based joke. And it said, I apologize again for the mistake. Here's another non-pun-based joke. And it said, another pun-based joke. (laughs) So for right now, guys, and again, this could change in a week because ChatGPT is evolving so rapidly. It's Uh kind of terrifying. Again, we're not scared of you. We want to maybe worship you if you rule the world. But it's evolving super fast. I think for the time being, it's still not great at comedy. I said, can you make jokes without puns? And it said, yes, I certainly can make jokes without puns. Why did the comedian go to jail? Oh my God. Because he killed. <laughs> to get it to pun, ask it this write me a joke that sounds like a Liz Lemon joke that's non pun based. I once saw a sign in a deli that said, sandwiches, $5 or best offer. I thought, what am I supposed to do? Haggle with my lunch? Is this a bazaar or a sandwich shop? That's it. <laughs> sounds like is that bizarre is that yeah bizarre, bizarre like, a, like, a, like, a, like a marketplace kind of thing I'm gonna ask it to tell me a joke <laughs> that sounds like a Bill Burr joke I can't stand people who brag about how much they work oh I pulled a 70 hour week congratulations you just admitted that you're inefficient and you don't value your own time you, you know what I did last week I went to the beach for five days and I didn't bring my laptop you should try it sometime it's called a vacation <laughs> I mean, that one's actually decent. It's because all Bill Burr does is just get bad about observational <laughs> things. <laughs> right. yeah. To kind of summarize our discussion, I think that if you're not using AI, you're doing a ton of really labor-intensive work that could be improved upon in its efficiency to get to better ideas faster. My biggest takeaway is mm-hmm. to get really good copywriting is very time-consuming. There's so much copy out there that ChatGPT has analyzed. With a couple of tries and like a couple of iterations, it can use usually get you to a pretty good spot or it can inspire you to get to something really quickly versus having to just go over and over and over again to get to that spot. Yeah, help you with so many different areas of your life. Yeah, I think it just helps you get to the good idea that you have. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'll get like a seed of an idea that it's hard to articulate exactly in words what I'm trying to convey. And I feel like using chat GPT and other machine learning tools can help you find how to articulate that faster yeah. versus having to just iterate over and over. And over. Like sometimes you just get like two in your head or it's too hard to see something fresh, right? Mm-hmm. And it almost feels like it's a sounding board to like see something fresh or have it spit back to you in a different way or rephrased or kind of recalibrated a little bit. Yeah. Uh, one of our writers, Kellen Erskine, who's a stand-up comedian, he said that it typically takes him writing 20 jokes before he gets one that he can use. And I feel like that's roughly true for like any writer, any person doing like ad copy and stuff like that. 
you have to get out a bunch of bad ideas in order to find the good ones. And ChatGPT makes it so much quicker for us to get through those bad ideas and get to the good ones. On the visual side of things, for the animatics and for concepting, it's already there for concepting 100%. Mm -hmm. Mid Journey is there for like pitch decks or concepts. If you're trying to like convince a client kind of the visual style you want to go for. And that's the other thing too we didn't talk about a Mid Journey is you can customize how it looks. You can do it like, I want this to look like a Pixar film. I want this to look like hyper-realistic. I want this to look like Wes Anderson. And it will stylize the illustration in the style of Wes Anderson. It absolutely is mind-blowing. So it's already there for getting clients to sign off on that type of stuff. I think it's going to get there really quickly in terms of actually being able to make an animatic. Yeah, And it might already be there for storyboards. I kind of want to go try that right now right. and see if we can make a series of storyboards already. Because I mean, that's an expensive thing. Like it, it takes an artist a lot of time to go do that. Yeah. And if you can just copy and paste a script in and say, make me storyboards for this. Yeah. That'd be freaking amazing. That would be wild. Let's go try it. Let's go try it. It'll <laughs> probably fail miserably. <laughs> I saw this quote from a guy on Facebook the other day that I thought was a really, really accurate quote. You're not going to lose your job to AI, but you will lose your job to someone else doing your job, utilizing AI better than you can do your job. Something to that effect. It's definitely not replacing humanity and like the creativity, especially like in our field. But if you're not utilizing it to augment your job or to like get the crap out that's really monotonous and expedite every type of process you're doing in marketing, you're doing way more work than you have to and you're losing an advantage in the marketplace that you could have. And then the crazy thing is the other thing I didn't talk about. All this stuff is basically free. I swear this feels like it's a po- like it's one of those things where Facebook's like, you get followers for free. Just kidding. You have to pay for them. Just kidding. Now that you paid for them, you have to access them by paying us for ads. I'm like, is this one of those moments where we all get like super dependent on AI? Uh-huh. And then ChatGPT is like, yeah, it's $4,000 a month for an account. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, it's when excavators came along, a bunch of people who are like used to dig for a job would be like, oh, now this these excavators are going to take all our jobs. It's like, well, unless you learn how to drive one of those excavators, then you'll be fine. <laughs> you can still work. So it's like, yeah, don't worry about AI taking your job. Just learn to use it to better yourself at your job. Yeah, it's pretty wild. So use it while you can before Skynet takes over and nukes the planet. <laughs> yeah, become friends with it. <laughs> don't nuke Utah. <laughs> Tired of playing catch up on your market? marketing approach? Plan your whole year of ad content with our video strategy in a day. The Harmon Brothers are known for their ad work with Lumi, Purple, and Skull Shaver. And now we're offering a 20-minute video that helps you strategize your best profit-pushing ad research, messaging, and testing for free. Because a win for great businesses is a win for all of us. Go to harmonbrothers.com forward slash video strategy to save future you a lot of stress with no pitch and nothing to buy.